Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a real pleasure to be here today. I grew up in Nimruz, Afghanistan, and in my childhood, across of the street that I was grew up, there was an empty plot of the land. One day, on that empty plot of the land, Taliban collected all the books and TV sets from the houses far and near and set them on the fire. Only Islamic books and a few other subjects were allowed. The message was clear. Only our ideas matter. Only we matter. The Taliban rule. From my window, I saw the ideas, dreams, and freedom applause. With the strict of the match, these books, this television, my only window to the outside world, trend to dash. First fire, and then darkness. My heart broke, and then I became angry. On that day, I learned some things that became the Catholics for the rest of my life. Anger is a gift, a gift of fire, a gift that if it burns brightly enough, it can change the world. And for me, it's led me to discover the fire inside of me, the fire of my imagination. It took me a while to climb this fire inside of me. But over the time, I climbed of several times dream. During my childhood, Afghanistan had no a great TV show. But with the help of VCR, we could watch the Bollywood and our cartoons on VHS tapes. It was an escape to the dream world that sufficiently was prettier than the life under the Taliban rule. It opened my mind to outsider world. But with the TV sits on the fire and the books turns to dash, we didn't have much to do. We were confined to our houses. Although it wasn't a jail, but it felt like a jail. Women and girls in Afghanistan were, at that time, were not allowed to go outside without the male guardian. Any social interaction could only happen in the houses that was separated with the big walls. Sometimes we whisper to each other carefully. We told each other about our secrets and fear. Sometimes we also share our light in darkness, Regan. The Taliban loves the darkness. The darkness was the aim. Keeping children ignorant was a dream. No access to outside the world was the plan. No critical thinking was the goal. What stood for the truth was the word that came from the father, from the mullah, and from the teachers, all by the nature conservative. It's not only evading a culture that keep all of us in the darkness. Yes, boys keep in the darkness, but for the girls, it was even worse. The Taliban take over Afghanistan, which participated to destroy all the girls' schools. And what it was remind, it was a nightmare. The girls been rushing to getting married at a young age. And soon after the marriage, they realized that they are struggling to survive a very different, very limited, and dark life. Because of all this devastation in my young life, I begin to imagine that in the future, someday, I would have some things smaller than TV that I could watch my cartoon. I dream that I would have a books that you could read and it would quickly, quickly could be disappear. Many years later, I now know that the tablets and cell phones make my dream to become true. The Taliban had our life in captivity. But my childhood imagination gave me wings to fly. My little mind never would stop to traveling to the beautiful imaginary place that there was no Talib, a place that magic was happening and you are free to do what you wanted. 
I dream to have those kind of magical books that take you to the places and teach you, and they would be disappear. My journey to understanding technology started through my own imagination. I grew up in Iran as an Afghan refugee. I knew what a color TV was, and I started having education at an early age. We returned back to Afghanistan, but this time to Herat. And all this happened. I found it was very difficult for me to accept one way of dreaming to become nothing but someone's wife. But everything was changed in 2003. An internet cafe opened up in Herat that only my brother and cousin would go there. A good girl wouldn't walk in. I was told that in this internet cafe there is a machine box, or I always call it a magical box, that connects you to the world. I was a shy person that who always dreamed to be a confident. I think that the first time that I was demonstrated my confidence was a time that I was insisted to go to this internet cafe and see these things that people call it internet. I refused to give up my dream. One day, I was walking before the opening hearts, and there, the internet, the invention that I always heard and imagined appeared. That day, my life was changed. I started using this machine box that connected you to the world, and soon I started chatting with the people everywhere. And this is how I learned my English, through my chatting. My whole world opened up, and I felt like alive. I became more confident, and all I wanted is to learn everything that I could about this technology and stay connected to the world. At the age of 16, it, it had become clear to me if I want to change, bring change in my life, I have to imagine what is possible and increase my knowledge. Time changed enough for me to go to the university, and I select computer science as my field. After graduation, I took a job at the university as IT coordinator. Later on, I started my own software domain company. And I hired a lot of the women as a blogger and programmers, and I became the first tech female CEO in Afghanistan. Then I started, what is truly possible? to make technology. It's led me to think to giving the girls access to technology. It's led me to start a digital sum fund, a nonprofit organization that give access to opportunities and take education for the girls and women in developing countries. This year I start with one goal and one dream. With the goal to see technology as an accessible option for everyone but a dream that everyone, even those who are living in conservative countries, they have access to opportunities and education, no matter their gender or social status. Yes, it may seem like a big goal, but if we do not have a courage to dream different, nothing will ever change. When we imagine a different future for young women and children all around the world, then we have the power to do what is necessary to affect those changes. At my own journey, at 16 years old, me would never have thought that one day I can live in New York City and run as a CEO of Digital Sum Fund. So how can we change our world? If I could give a piece of advice to every young woman and girls who are struggling to imagine a better future for themselves, I would say first. You have the power of imagination that no one can take from you. Imagine that you can make your own future and set your own goal to be the person you always want to be. You have the power to imagine yourself as an independent person. You have the real power to set and achieve the goals, to be the person you always imagined to be. Second, imagination is a key to the future. 
the secret that unlocks potential. It's the first and base of all we do and create it. Knowledge is necessary for real education and growth, but imagination is a key to the knowledge. Finally, the more we dream, the more we know. The more we know, the more we can do. Imagination and knowledge can get in their meaning from each other and grow as they are full feet dear each other. Neri, all of my life, I have imagined a better life for the girls. A year ago, I was asked to facilitate a group of Afghan robotics to come to first international um, global challenge in Washington, D.C., an international robotic contest for Tunisia. And I thought, why not to make this all girl team? It would definitely send a message to the world and the women and girls in Afghanistan. So I put an exam from 150 students and 20 selected. But many of these girls didn't have their parents' permission. And those who had the parents' permission, they asked me, what is the robot? You can realize that my choice getting to is really limited. We ended up to select six girls who had both their parents' permission and they had the knowledge of robot. But none of them had a visa to come to the United States. And especially with the new administration's rules, getting the visa is getting very, very difficult. They were denied two times. But we didn't get this far too quiet. We persisted. We went to the media. We got the attention of the people. We got the attention of senators. And we got the attention of 53 congressmen who signed a petition for us. At the last minute, we got the attention of the White House. At the very, very last minute, President Trump graciously granted the visa to the girl. 14 years old, Fatima Ghadrian, she is the captain of the robotic team. She recalls when she was six years old. At that time, she was watching a cartoon of a robot, and she keep asking, how is that possible? Today, she knows her answer. These girls had found their passion. At the robotic competition, they put it off all the challenges in communication in English, these girls, learned so much. They were right at the home with everything that was happening to them. They won second medal, and they took home with them the silver medal for courage achievement. They received a hero returns and honored by President Ghani and First Lady of Afghanistan. This was a victory. A vision of hope for a country that for centuries ignored women's ability in the science and many other industries. Mission accomplished and mass sent. Hopefully, it was received by all Afghan girls who are confined with the Taliban culture. Imagination is powerful, dream big. Thank you. In a modern country, all of above wouldn't much mean, but for women in Afghanistan, this girl came a long way. They are the first generation of Afghan women who get an education that inspired them to dream a better life, a life that they can learn about technology and represent of their country anywhere in 21st centuries. Today, this year has trained 10,000 of the girls in Afghanistan. We invest 20 to 30 dollars to each of these girls to see more than 100 of them grow to become entrepreneurs by themselves, taking their life into their own hand and helping other women and girls lead off life of choice and never before imagined possibilities. Some of them, they invented their own product and some of them improved the their, their existing product. Sixty-eight percent of the product in Afghanistan are imported. 
and they are not produced locally. We are trying to make change. There are endless possibilities. In 2017, Digital Sem Fund helped 100 women startups, and in 2018, we are going to showcase all these projects and products in our biggest conference in technology, innovation, and entrepreneurship as part of our New Year's celebration. For example, 17 years old, Bass Baby. She is proud co-founder of a startup of making handicraft like bags and carpet. At the age of 17, she has 25 people work for her. She gave $4,000 as a donation to her school to help progress of technology. She is one of the shining examples. Today, half of the population in Afghanistan are teenagers. All we want is to ensure that Afghanistan, in the eyes of the next generation, in the next 20 years, is a country of source high-tech rather than a country of terror and war. Just imagine. When a girl, a woman, decided to expand her knowledge and change her life at the beginning, She's not taken seriously. When I started going to the internet cafe every day, at the age of 16, my parents thought it was a phase, and my brother were getting into my whim. When my first time I showed my practical project, my brother thought that I was out of the control, and my father was a spectral. And I told to my father, the reason I get this to, the reason that I get to this it's because I am like him. He gave me his blessing, and he told everybody that he trusts me. As trust goes both ways, I keep him informed step by step, and never keep a secret from him. And he believed in me. Every child is born with an imagination that grants the power to unlock a world where anything is possible. The greatest dream a start from a thought of maybe, just maybe, things don't always to be like this way. What happened to me and what I'm committed to do for every young woman and girls that they, who needs it is to withdraw the curtain of ignorance and give access to change that before would have seemed impossible. Today I know this. Once imagination is unlocked, the hard working is required to bring the change. And if you are willing to do that hard working, then you will be a time that you will need to fight for what you want to be. But no matter what, never lose and trust in yourself. I am Roya Mahbub, and I, and I believe on the power of imagination. Don't tell the girls that they can't. If you give them an opportunity, they can. And to every girl and to every woman, I would say, don't give up. Say yes to opportunities. Keep your fire burning bright and always believe that. Because you are here, a better world is possible.